Good morning, everyone. It is 4:45 in the morning on Thursday, July 25th. And you might be saying to yourself, "What are you doing at 4:45 in the morning?" That's a good question. Uh, I don't have an answer. Uh, I just woke up at 4:45. I usually wake up early to go work out and then you know go to work and all that. But uh, haven't done one of these very early uh, morning videos in a while. So here we are. Today we are comparing the Cord Mojo to the Q5, and I wanted to do the U, the Bluetooth comparison as well today. I may get to it in this video. I may have to wait until the end of the day to upload a second video on the Bluetooth comparison. We'll see. <clears throat> right now, I have the Mojo plugged into my juice box because, for some strange reason, <clears throat> the battery died when this thing was already off. And I don't know why that happened. Uh, it's being charged right now, and hopefully it's fully charged, but we'll see. It was doing something funky where it wasn't turning on, and then it finally turned on, and then when it was connected to the computer, it was clicking back and forth the, the uh, I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, hopefully it'll be fine. Boy, it would be terrible after the whole experience I had getting the mojo that if this thing just died now. That would not be cool. Let's talk about the Fio real quick. The Fio is a fairly good comparison to the Mojo. So the Fio has balanced out, regular three and a half out. You have a USB connection to, you, you can't even see it now. You have the USB connection to the computer. You also have a separate charging port, just like the Mojo. Mojo has a USB, micro USB to data and micro USB for charging. Same thing with the Fio. The Fio also has DSD capability. It has coax in and out. And it also has line out. Okay? It also has optical. So you get optical coax, you get clean line out, you get three and a half millimeter, and then you also get USB data. DSD, base boost, gain boost there you go this is a, a, a fairly good competitor to the mojo it also has lights but they're not so gimmicky right the, the lights just kind of they are only a couple colors of the rainbow on on the fia whereas with the mojo they go through the whole spectrum so let's just get to the sound review i currently have the fia plugged in i have the hd 660s on my head and let's start playing <clears throat> mountains. Let's listen for that rumble initially for the first 10 seconds, then we're going to skip ahead to about halfway into the song, listen to the crescendo when the organ and all the instruments come in, then I'll give you my impression, then we'll switch to the mojo. Okay, here we go. And it's also nice to have a mechanical wheel here, you see, that actually has an indication of what the volume is doing other than guessing the colors. Guessing the colors is not very helpful. Morning coffee, which turned out pretty good actually. The rumble is there, but it's not particularly prevalent on the Fio. And just so you know, it's right about, what is this? It's about three o'clock volume wise with the 660. But the Fio is not a particularly powerful portable. It'll drive headphones, but it won't drive all your headphones. Let's skip ahead to halfway into the song. Okay, so here's the thing. The, this sounds relatively flat with no bass EQ, no filter engage for uh, the bass boost. And that could be problematic if you want like a full-fledged throaty sound. This doesn't, this is, 
Not only is this flat, but it's also kind of lean, meaning you don't really get the emphasis behind not only the bass, but also the mid-tones. <clears throat> so that, that, that may be a good thing for you if you're looking for something that's really neutral and clean and, and uncolored. But I think a lot of people expect a little bit of oomph when they listen to songs. Which is why, by the way, Vio put in that bass boost. Now we'll look at the bass boost, but let me go to the mojo first. I mean second, really, not first. And let's listen to the song again. And it's working, hey! I'm on one green, one yellow, versus three o'clock on the field. One green, one yellow. Don't forget that. Now two sky blues. Yeah, the bass on the Mojo seems to be a little bit more emphasized. It lingers a little bit longer. So when there's that organ, when it plays in the background, the early part of the song, it seems to decay just a little bit slower with the Mojo than the Q5. And it also sounds a bit more boosted than the Q5. Let's skip ahead to halfway to the song. It is most definitely a better, let me rephrase, not better because better is very subjective. It is more, most definitely a more full sound than the Q5, where the Q5 is leaner on the bass, the Mojo just kind of gives you that bass boost and that decay is a little bit slower. And so when you get to the middle part of the song, where there's the crescendo, the organ, and all the instruments come in, the Mojo in comparison to the Q5 definitely sounds more throaty, more impactful, and it seems to have a bit more substance to it, meaning it doesn't feel as if there are things that are lacking in the song. And I'll give you a little bit more concrete example. Okay, let me put this down a little bit. Here's a more concrete example. If you listen to a Beats headphone, and Everybody can listen to a Beats headphone these days. You can go to Target or Best Buy or wherever and you'll be able to listen to them. If you listen to a Beats headphone after you listen to an ear pod, right? Like the standard iPod earphone that comes included with your phone, for example, earbud. After you listen to the uh, Beats, you learn a couple of things. First, you learn that there is a more engaging sound. Now, hold on, I know I'm talking about beats. Give me a second here, all right? Let, let me just get this through here. You get more engaging sound and it sounds fuller. It sounds much more soothing and meaty and impactful. You can use whatever acronym, acronym you can use whatever adjectives that you want to describe it, but it's a better sound than the sound that you get with your earbuds, your standard earbuds. That's not really what's going on here. It's not night and day difference like the example with the Beats. It's more of a difference between Beats and Bose, right? Where Beats is a bit more emphasized and the Bose is kind of like, okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna go that far with the bass emphasis. Now Bose does have elevated bass and they do bring down their highs because they want a comfortable listening experience, but they don't bump up their bass as much as Beats does. So that's a narrower, narrower, I don't know why I have such a hard time saying that word. That is a narrower comparison. So the Mojo, the Q5, they sound fairly close on this song. The only difference is that the bass on the Mojo is slightly more elevated and it decays a little bit longer than the Q5 in comparison, okay? Now let's go back and I'm gonna switch to the bass uh, filter on. Currently it's off, so I'm going to put it on on. And I'm also going to put the gain on high. So now we've got both of those engaged. Let's switch to the Fio Q5. Let's start this song again. Ok. 
come on now. Yeah, so my computer is having issues. Gain off. I hear no difference with the gain off at three o'clock on the volume. I mean, that's like an ever so slight, like a teeny tiny bit boost. You can barely just even notice it. The bass off, let's see. Yeah, there's a difference with the bass off. Slight. Let's skip to halfway to the song. Okay, here's the thing. You may not like this. Maybe you will like this. I don't know. We'll see. So the gain does nothing. <laughs> it did nothing for me. I couldn't hear a difference gain on or off. The bass boost does do something, and it doesn't do the thing that you think it'll do. See, what the bass does, the bass boost does is, it just cuts off some of the frequency, and it sounds muddier with the bass boost on than it does off. It is a quite noticeable difference. In fact, if you switch it on and off immediately as the song is playing, you will immediately notice that when it's off, it sounds cleaner. There's more detail in the song when you turn it on. There's, that detail goes away. It, what happens is the higher frequency is cut off. The lower frequency is slightly, ever so slightly boosted, but the higher frequency is mostly cut off. And that's not comparing apples to apples with the Mojo. The Mojo simply doesn't do that. Not only on the Mojo do you get a slightly better bass reproduction or more bumped up bass reproduction, but you also don't get any muddiness while you do it. Whereas with the Q5, it does get muddy because the, you know it's messing with the with the waveform because of that uh, uh, bass boost button there. So I wouldn't recommend this for bass boost because it simply doesn't do anything. So now we're left with two different sound signatures. Well, let me rephrase: it doesn't. It does do something, but it doesn't do what you want it to do. It will make your your music sound worse with the bass boost because all it's doing is cutting off the, the higher frequency and just kind of elevating slightly the lower frequency. And that's not a good mixture. At least not for this. It's not done well. Um, other than that, as far as detail goes, they sound equally detailed to me. That's a good thing. It's a very good thing because the Q5 is cheaper than the Mojo. I think most things are cheaper than the Mojo. Let's go to Want You Back by Haim. I currently have the Q5 plugged in. Let's go. Ah. Oh, that started loud. I'm gonna bring this back down to about 11 o'clock. She has that throaty voice. I told you this before, about, about 10, 15 seconds into it, we and the letter W sticks in the back of her throat. It comes out really well represented on the FIO. It drags out. Let's go back a little bit and let's hear it. Yeah. That that throatiness is actually ten seconds. That throatiness comes out, and it's it's really nice and detailed. What happens if I turn on the bass boost for this? Let's start again and find out. It sounds more closed off with the bass boost on. It sounds like you're swaddled in blankets. That may be the sound signature you're going for. But with the bass boost off, you get a little bit more sound stage. It sounds more airy. And so if it, so that's one of the things you can think about in bass boost. It's not really think of it as a bass boost, but think of it as sound stage limiter. 
And if you think of it that way, and you want a narrower sound stage, something a little bit more close to your head, turn on the bass boost. If you want something that's a little bit more airy, turn off the bass boost. That That's a much better way of describing what the sound signature becomes with the bass button. Calling it bass boost is not particularly accurate because it doesn't really bump up the bass, it just kind of limits the frequency and it cuts things off and that's, yeah, that's not really the bass boost. Let's keep going. Good sound stage. I can hear <coughs> the two backup vocalists left and right, then they're slightly off key and slightly uh, different timing. So the problem with this, again, the bass boost is off, gain is high, it doesn't matter if it's high or low, it doesn't make any difference apparently. At least not with the 660. So what I'm what I'm getting here is that even though it's the details are present, they're not particularly emphasized. Right now I've spoken about this before. So something can have detail, but it's not emphasized detail, meaning it doesn't just it doesn't come out. You're hunting for it. So the, something provides the detail, it's there, but you're bumping up the volume, you're messing around with your headphones, you're working with you know, the bass boost button or whatever, just to try to eat that detail out, just to get it emphasized, to bring it up forward. The Fio doesn't do that, it's more lean that way. I mean, the detail is there, it just doesn't come out directly to your face. And I say that partly because as the song is playing, you have the backup vocalist and the primary vocalist and the guitar, they all sound pretty much the same on the sound stage, like they're all equally shoulder to shoulder on the sound stage, which is not really how it's supposed to be. And the details for the guitar are there, so are the details for the vocalist. But because they're shoulder to shoulder on the sound stage, you have to hunt for them. The natural representation of it should be the vocalists are up front and the instruments are on the back, at least for this song. So you're not hunting for the detail, the details are there where they're supposed to be. They're not lost amongst everything else. Does that kind of make sense? So let's go back and now start with the Mojo, which does not have a bass boost option. There we go. The the uh, wee, the throaty wee, is just a tiny bit more emphasized on the mojo than on the Q5. So here's the thing with the Mojo. <clears throat> the Mojo has a much more comforting sound. Now it's a clean, clear sound, but it's very comforting, which means that, remember with the bass boost on the Q5, I said it's like you're swaddled in, in blankets. The Mojo does swaddling as well, but not as much. So you're not in a thick blanket like the Q5, you're in you know, a bed sheet. And you know you might feel nice and comfy wrapped in a bed sheet like a toga, apparently. But it, it, it doesn't give you the airiness that the Q5 does standard. The bass boost not on. It the Q5 is more airy, and it appears to have more sound stage than the Mojo. Going back and forth, that's the impression I'm getting. There's clean sound from the Mojo, but the clear. But the emphasis on the separation of voices is not as obvious as it is on the Q5. <clears throat> Excuse me, as it is on the Q5. Because of that airiness representation on the Q5, it's easier to find the separation. Because the separation just, it, it is. Now, I did say earlier that you're hunting for the details. That is true. You are hunting for the details. But that airy presentation at least makes the separation of the voices much easier to find than it does on the Mojo in comparison, 
where the mojo kind of, and I said this before in a prior, prior video about the mojo, it smears some of that detail when it gets to it. Uh, that may be the, the sound signature you want, maybe it's not. So you, you gotta be you know, absolutely clear about what you think the mojo does. The mojo is not a THX amplifier. It, it, it doesn't do that. Nor is it an airy amplifier. It's a comforting amplifier. It's like, think of Bose signature. Now you as audiophiles may hate Bose, I get it. But think of it as a mass produced product for the masses. That's what the Mojo is at, a, at an audiophile price. <laughs> it's a comforting sound. It's a clean, clear sound. But it doesn't give you hyper detail, nor does it give you airiness. Whereas the Q5 does give you the uh, airiness. It, well, the Q5 also doesn't give you hyper detail, but it's easier to find that whatever detail is present because of that airy presentation of the song. Let's move on to Flight from the City from Johan Johansson. I have the mojo on. The piano strikes are good, but they're a little bit muffled with the mojo. And it's, it's hard to say very specifically because on desktop amplifiers, good desktop amplifiers, what happens is that the keystrokes, the, the, they are more emphasized, that, that hit when he hits down on the key that thunk is more emphasized than it is on the mojo which is a little strange because it does boost up the bass a little bit it's just not the same amount now if i increase the volume significantly maybe it'll come out a little bit better now i'm on two purples and with the two purples very high volume it doesn't bring out that detail of the thump thump, it just makes everything louder. It's a very soothing and smooth tonality on the Mojo. Just, you could sit back and relax, close your eyes, listen to this song on the Mojo and fall asleep. It, it's very, very soothing. There's no peakiness, there's no harshness, there's no graininess. There's some electric buzz that's part of the song that's in the background. The mojo doesn't really bring that out a whole lot. I mean, it's there, it's just not emphasized. Let's go to the Q5. Assuming that my computer doesn't get all jittery with me. It didn't, hey. Immediately the Q5 is more airy, there's more room to the music. The electric buzz is slightly easier to find. The buzz is not overemphasized on the Q5, just like on the Mojo, but because of that airiness it was easier for me to pinpoint it immediately. Volume is about two o'clock. I would say that the keystroke is, it's about the same on the mo as it is on the Mojo. Not overemphasized. Now, if I turn on the bass boost, Yeah, when I turn on the bass boost, there's a slight, slightly bit more emphasis on the keystroke as it hits, as it does that thunk, but not a whole lot.
good separation of all the instruments, just like with the Mojo. So Mojo, closer soundstage, Fio, wider soundstage, and it's noticeable difference. It's not like a teeny tiny little, oh, it's a little bit more on the Q5 than it is on the, I don't know why I sound like the evil witch from the east. Which is the West? I don't know. I haven't seen Wizard of Oz in a long time. I don't know why I sound like an evil witch. <laughs> My little baby said that. Look, it's five o'clock. So, what can I say? This is this is me at five o'clock right now. Uh, more eerie, less eerie. That's a very good distinction, and it's a consistent distinction with three songs so far. We'll continue to do this, but it, we're getting a picture now. And I'm glad that there is a difference here because now you can actually have an option based upon your, your sound preference. Let's go to... Let's go to... How about... Natalie by Milk and Bone. I have the Q5 right now. It starts off with some electric guitar. And turn on the bass boost. Yeah, with the bass boost off, it's just more airy. And I, I kind of like that <clears throat> because you have that, there's this haunting whisper in the background that just comes up around 28 seconds of the song and it gets a little bit louder and louder. With the bass boost off, it just seems more ethereal than with the bass boost on. It just kind of sneaks up on you on with the bass boost off, which is a really cool experience. No graininess. There's no harshness at all. The vocal is very smooth. Volume is about three o'clock. And what I can say is that no noise from the Q5, nothing that I can hear at all. No harshness, no peakiness. It's fairly neutral. In fact, I would say it's probably more neutral than the Mojo is at this point. There's a good amount of detail with this with the song, and here I'll show you an example here. Let's go back to One minute and 50 seconds into the song, the vocal, primary vocalist is singing, and she says something, and then she stops, and then she starts saying something again, and there's this, kind of that, that, that it's a sound that your mouth makes once you've already made a seal, and then you open the, the your mouth again to say the next thing. So here's what happens. Your mouth is closed, there's, there's, some moisture left on your lips and on your tongue and when you open your mouth again that air rushes out and your tongue unsticks on the top of your mouth and then that's your licking sensation right that's your chop like a dog goes I would know my dogs do that all the time it's not that she's not licking her mouth but as she opens her mouth it's that kind of like that you know like sit there and do that for a minute uh, in the mirror, then you'll know. Don't do it around other people because then they'll think you're an idiot, but yeah, in private. That comes out really clear and it's a great little detail. No graininess, no harshness, very neutral. And frankly, I, I am very pleased on this song, how the Q5 has performed. I'm very pleased how the Q5 has performed on all the songs. The bass boost, again, doesn't really help. It narrows the soundstage. I like that wider soundstage. It's a good distinction between it and the Mojo. So let's keep one minute and 50 seconds in the back of our minds as we switch to the Mojo. 
Here we go. So here's here's the thing. Let's stop. Let's increase the volume to light purple. Now full purple. Let me try again. So full purple is fairly loud. And I and I'll keep doing this. We'll go to a lighter purple, which is apparently louder than full purple. Hmm. And the reason I'm doing that is because I have to keep cranking the volume up to see where the music actually starts playing on the headphone. If I go to the Q5 real quick, and I start playing, oops. I should switch the switch here. Yeah, it's exactly the same. The reason I'm doing that is because this song starts out like really low, like it, it in the recording, they, what they did with the, with the waveform is that they, they had zero volume as the guitar is initially playing and they slowly ramped that up and about two seconds into the song you start hearing the, the, um, the guitar. Same presentation on both. I was trying to figure out if that guitar presentation was coming out a second sooner on the Mojo or the Fio or vice versa. That's not the case. They're equally the same. So let's go back to the Mojo and keep going forward. Immediately, the guitar has a bit more presence to it than on the Q5. The Q5 is leaner, as I said before, and the Mojo has that slight boost. Now, when the haunting sound comes in around two, three, three, 30 seconds into the song, it, it, it sneaks up on you like it does on the Q5, but it's definitely not the same presentation, whereas it just sounds closer to you right and warmer it's just a warmer presentation the q5 it seems like it starts off at a distance and it, and it just gets closer and closer and then all of a sudden it's louder and i that's a very nice airy presentation where the mojo it's like you're sitting in a closed room and it sounds great it's acoustically you know designed room so it sounds really really good but it's not the same presentation as being outside and watching it and hearing it in a concert. That's the type of, of dif this differentiation I would provide between these two. We're getting to 1 minute and 50 seconds. I want to hear for that, that detail with the mouth. So I'm going to stay quiet for a second or two, a few seconds. Okay, so that detail is there, but it is not as as emphasized on the Mojo than it is on the Q5. But on the Q5, because of its it's so airy and and you know you can find those details it's a little bit easier on the Q5 than you can on the Mojo. That when she opens her mouth at one minute and thirty sec, one minute and fifty seconds, it it's easier to pinpoint it. Where with, whereas with the Mojo, the detail is there, but because the way that the Mojo is designed to give you that more comforting experience, the boost in the bass, uh, it's, it doesn't really come across as easily. Again, those details on the Mojo are getting blended together with other frequencies. It sounds easy to listen to, it's very pleasant, but if you're looking for details, the Mojo is probably not the way to go. The Q5, beats the mojo as far as detail uh, retrieval is concerned. Let's go to new light, speaking of detail, let's go to new light because it has a ton of detail. And let's do the mojo first, here we go.
It's a very warm presentation, very soothing, comfortable. I can hear the wind rustling. I can hear the kids in the background a little bit. There's supposed to be footsteps right around this point of the song, and I can't hear that. I can hear a guitar and a piano, but they're kind of muddled together. You blend it together. And let's go to the Q5 now. About... I've maxed out the volume now. I'll try again. Twelve o'clock volume. Let's start again real quick. I could hear the footsteps. I could hear the kids cleaner, easier. The wind is discernible to me. The guitar is leaner in the presentation. There's no emphasis on the guitar. So when the guitar chord is played, there the lingeringness, the the I was gonna say the transients, not the transients, it's the reverberation lasts shorter than the mojo. Same thing with the piano. That piano strike hits it just stays momentarily and then it, you move on to the next note. Whereas with the mojo, it lingers a little bit longer. If I turn on the bass boost. Ugh, the bass boost on this song sounds terrible. It just squishes, squeezes everything together and that's not what you want to do. So I would not buy the Q5 for the bass boost. It doesn't. It, it does not do you any favors. It will just make your your song sound worse, in my opinion. So what am I getting out of this? So here's the thing, you know, it's just very interesting. The di two different, vastly different tonalities of these two units. And I am so glad that there are two different tonalities to these units. I, I, I'm just so very glad that there is. Why? Because now you have choice. You have the op option of either getting a warmer sounding, more comforting sounding portable like a Mojo, or the more slightly more analytical, more airy for sure, like the Fio Q5. And now you now, now some of you may say, God, I was wishing that the Q5 would be like the Mojo and it would be just a cheaper Mojo. Mm, yes and no, because you still get a lot of connection options as you do with the Mojo. You have better implementation of the volume, for sure. Like, anything is better than, the, than the, these circle globs here. Uh, you have a bass boost. You know, look, my, my preference is not using the bass boost, and I don't think that the game really does anything for me. But maybe you'll think differently. Maybe you'll say, oh, I really like the bass boost. I, I, I enjoy what it does to, the, to my songs. And you may have different songs that you listen to that take well to the bass boost. That's cool, that's great. Then in that sense, this is a better option than the Mojo because you get that airiness. For sure, you will definitely get the airiness on the Q5 standard. And if you don't want the airiness, you want a more closed off experience, then you turn on the bass boost. And now you get that closed off experience, which is not the same as the Mojo, mind you. Even though the Mojo is a more closed experience, it doesn't go to the extreme like the bass boost on the Q5. That bass boost just takes it to another level. And if I was to compare the bass boost here with the Mojo, I would prefer the Mojo every time. Because even though that the, it smears some of the frequencies, it just doesn't come out muddled like it does on the bass boost on the Q5, in my opinion. That might change with the types of songs you have, the file formats, the, your headphones, and yes, yada, yada, yada. Yes, that is true, to a degree. Do you wanna do a, a bass test real quick? 
Let's do a base test. How can? Why do I keep asking these questions? You don't know. You only know this after it's been uploaded. So maybe I'm reaching out into the future and asking you. Drum solo by Jack Bruce. I have the Q5 plugged in right now. Let's play this thing. About two o'clock. And man, that airiness is just so cool. It just gives you that sound stage. I'm just gonna skip ahead to about halfway into the song when he starts riffing. It's good. It's just very lean. The, so the, the bass is not particularly emphasized. There's no sharpness to the drum hits. As the drumstick hits the top of the drum head, it causes this, I was gonna say sonic boom, but it's not a sonic boom, but it, it hits and then what happens inside the drum is that the sound waves are immediately, uh, what am I trying to say? This is not accurate at all what I'm saying. Let me rephrase. When the drum head is hit with the drumstick, you hear that very sharp, uh, sonic boom. Ugh. Once again, it's 5.30, so give me a break here. A sharp rapport as the drumstick hits the top of the drum head. And you get this sharpness that, that hits the inside of your ear. That's how it's, it is supposed to be represented in real life. That's what happens. The Q5, it, you know, I'm not hearing that. I'm not hearing that sharpness as the drummer first hits the drum head. And maybe you'll like that because you don't really want that sharpness. But the but what the Q5 does do very well is that provides you that sound stage. It's very airy. Now what if I turn on the bass boost? Does that change the uh, the drum representation? It adds a bit of meatiness to it. The decay is a little slightly longer, but it doesn't do anything favorable in my opinion. I would prefer for the I would prefer not to have the bass boost. Okay, so let's switch to the to the mojo. More closed off compared to the Q5. Let's skip ahead. Yeah, so the Mojo provides a more emphasized bass, and that sharp rapport is a little bit more nuanced than it is on the Q5, meaning that that sharpness with the drum hit comes out more than on the Q5. Now, it's not, it's nowhere like the sharpness that you would hear, say, on the THX, or the 789, or the Audio GD one amp. You know, those are really, really powerful amplifiers, and I think they're able to eke out more of that sharpness because they're putting more power into your headphones. But the Mojo does a fairly admirable job, being what it is, the size that it is. And so, I particularly like the Mojo compared to the Q5 on this song because of that sharpness of the drum hit and because the drum just sounds a bit more full on the Mojo than it does on the Q5. But on the other hand, the Q5 sounds more roomy and airy with the drum. And it really just comes down to your personal sound preference, I think. Okay? So I think that's a good representation of the song. So what do, what do I think of this? Well, here's the thing. I really like these two. Uh, I like both of them. I think they're, they're both phenomenal for what they do. Now, we are going to do the, the Bluetooth test, but I don't have time to do it now. I have to get ready. So the Bluetooth test is going to come later today with the Q5 and the Mojo. So you have something to look forward to. <sighs> I don't know if the Mojo, after all these tests we've done, and we still have many, many, many more to do, because I have a whole list of, of comparisons with the Mojo and tests that I want to do, because it's such a hyped product. Here's the picture I'm getting so far. and. This is just a continuing, altering, evolving picture as we move along. I'm just giving you my impressions. 
I don't think the Mojo is worth 500 bucks. I, I really don't. It's a good product, it's an excellent product, but all this audiophile talk about it's the cleanest, it's the best, you know, this is the, this is exactly what I've always been wanting. And it's, okay, great, if this is what you want, that's fantastic. But it's not the only portable out there that gives you clean sound. And it's certainly not the only portable out there that gives you all these connections that can be used as desktop and portable. Okay, it's just, it's not worth $500. It, does it sound good? Yes. Is it a different tonality than other things? Yeah, for the most part. But it's not leagues ahead. It's not so mind-bogglingly great that I would jump up and say, I will definitely pay $500 for this. I wouldn't pay $500 for this. I didn't pay $500 for this. I paid with a lot of frustration, but that's a separate thing. And now you have the Q5, which goes for, what is it, $399, I think? Maybe? Let's see. And you can definitely find the Q5 significantly cheaper used on eBay. Theo Q5. How much does it go for? $299, yeah. You can buy it for $250 on eBay. You can buy it for about $200-ish if you look around on Amazon. It's not that difficult to find the Q5 because it's a Theo product, meaning there's a lot of them. It's so much cheaper than the Mojo. Let's assume it's $250. $299, we're not going to pay full price. Let's say it's $250, that's half the price of the Mojo. You have basically the same amount of connections. You get the coax, let me just read it. You get coaxial, line in, optical. You get line out, it's a clean out. You get USB, you get balanced, you get your 3.5 millimeter. You get your charging port, which is separate. You get your USB to your computer, which is separate. You actually have a volume knob, which is easier. You have Bluetooth built in. DSD capable. You have buttons here that can skip and pause and yeah, yada yada yada. And none of that stuff is present on the Mojo. Oh wait, no, it's not true. No, that's not what I mean. The Mojo has no Bluetooth. It has two headphone outs. Neither is balanced. It has coax in and out, so that gives you SPDIF and three and a half millimeter. You have your optical. You have your two USB. App, you know, basically the same. But you get balanced with this. You don't get balanced with that. Now, I thought that being an audiophile means that you absolutely always want balance if you could get it. Ugh, I can't believe you bought something that doesn't have balance in it. You, peon. No balance and balanced. Anybody out there, and I'm not saying you are out there, I'm not saying all audiophiles are like that, but some are. All right, you definitely listen. Need to listen to it to balance. Well, if you if you are the if you're that type of person, and you purchase the Mojo, then explain to me why it is that you're okay with buying the Mojo without a balanced, but telling everybody else they need to get a balanced. I doesn't make sense to me. Overall, the sound of these two is significantly different. More airy. More soundstage versus Mojo, more boost in the bass, more natural boost in the bass. Let me put it that way. Much more natural boost in the bass, more comforting sound. Smooths out the, the details, kind of blends them in. Whereas the Fio, it's easier to separate them because of that airiness. Unless you turn on the bass boost, which then just destroys the song in my opinion. But if you're of the mind that, look, I want to have the option of going back and forth, then the Fio is definitely better than the Mojo. Because nat the standard sound signature from the Fio is open and airy. And it's a, it's a fairly good representation of it. You get a noticeable difference on the sound stage when you turn on the bass boost. And as I said, all the bass boost is really doing, from my impression, is that it's, it's cutting off the higher frequency at some point, and it's slightly, ever so slightly boosting up the bass, and then it's just bringing in the sound stage. And so it makes it sound as if that there's a lot more bass, but there isn't. There's not. Not through this. Whatever they did with the filter on this is not particularly good, in my opinion. Now, you may find it with some songs that that bass boost does wonders for you. Great. That's why it's there. That's why it's an option. Sometimes you want it, sometimes you don't. And you may say to yourself, I'm fine with that bass re reproduction. It sounds good to me. Great. You also have high-low gain on this. 
and you can mess around with a lot of things on the, on the Q5 that you really, you know, don't really have the option on the Mojo. And the Mojo is what it is. You can't change the tonality of the Mojo. And not on the unit. You can do it on EQ, but you're not changing the tonality of the Mojo. You're, you're changing, you're EQing the bits, the stuff that's coming from your computer to the Mojo. And I suppose you could say the same thing on the Q5. You know, you're messing with the waveform. Yes, you are. You're messing with the waveform <clears throat> with the bass boost. So which one do I recommend out of this? Well, you know, we still have to do the Bluetooth test, but let us assume that Bluetooth test is a wash. It's even. Then I, I think that you have to look at it in the terms of dollars, which is more useful to your wallet. And I, I, I think that for the features that you get, the options that you have, uh, the Q5 is the better uh, compared to the Mojo. It's as clean as the Mojo is. Guys, there's no difference in, in, in noise. There is no noise on either of them. Okay, I, I've, I've had my headphones, the entire time I've been talking here for the last five minutes, I've had my headphones plugged into the Mojo and I hear nothing. Dead silence. I've switched to the Q5, nothing dead silent I, I don't hear anything and as I was playing the songs back and forth I heard no noise from either of them nothing and if there is something that is different on the Q5 than on the Mojo I can't find it and I'm using really good headphones this the 660 is an excellent headphone maybe it's not to the extent of a you know two thousand dollar HD 800 but come on guys and who's gonna wear an HD 800 to test these things I mean I could Yes, I could, but I'm not going to. This is for the masses. This video is for those who, you know, who don't have $2,500 to spend on a Maze Imperium sort of thing. You know what I mean? My impression, the Q5 is the better option of the Mojo. Oh, ouch. Uh, right in the heart. That hurts. Oh, no. How is it possible? Well, that's why. I just told you. I explained it to you. More options. More options, sounds better to me. It doesn't mean that it will sound better to you. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that there is no way anybody in the world should ever buy the Mojo because the Q5 exists. That's not what I'm saying. I have them, obviously. You just get two different tonalities. And if you prefer to have that natural, warmer tonality, and now this is running out of battery because it's saying red. It's like HAL 9000. Hello, Dave. How are you doing today, Dave? It looks like a mouth, too. How are you doing today, Dave? Can you see the red? Yeah, there. How are you doing today, Dave? Shut up, you. This is what happens when I wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning. If you like the Mojo, you like it because of that natural warm tonality, and you're okay with it blending the details together. And you're okay with some of the quirks and the, you know, the user, interf user interface being what it is. That's fine. But you're limited to, to that tonality. And if you want something more airy with the option of getting that bass filter than the Q5. Even though I don't think that the bass filter really is all that complimentary. But that's just my opinion. <clears throat> now, if you're stuck between the two, and if you thought only the Mojo was possible, is, is a possible alternative to um, a desktop, that is not true anymore. It's not true. Now the Mojo definitely has more power to it than the Fio, there's no doubt about that. But the Fio drove my 660 great. I had no issues. Now, at one point I had cranked it to, to maximum volume. I was like, I had cranked to maximum volume. And then I realized that I had, for whatever reason, I had just limited the volume on Spotify. I don't know how that happened. So I had to pull that back up and then the volume was fine. So, drives 660S fantastically. Same as the Mojo. No noise, no interference, clean sound, different sound signatures. I would submit more options on the Fio out of the box. Bluetooth, bass boost, gain, balanced. That's a lot. That's a whole lot more option that you're getting that you're not getting on the Mojo. What can I say? Fio, I think, if you're looking at it dollar-wise, is the better 
option compared to the Mojo. And tonality, that's up to you, which tone, that, the, which sound signature you prefer. And I, I can't put a price tag on that for you because the Mojo does sound really good for what it does. It's very, very good. And to some people, that's worth 500 bucks. For other people, it's not worth 500 bucks. For some people, you know, even though they like the airiness, it's not worth $250. So it, that's an individual assessment that you have to make. All right, thank you very much. It's 5.40. I have to get ready. I hope that this has been helpful, enjoyable to a degree. And later today, we're going to do the Bluetooth test because I need time to charge these devices again. It's just so, you know, they don't die. We'll do the Bluetooth test and uh, then we'll continue on with the review process. Have a wonderful morning. Have a wonderful day. It's Thursday. I'm so glad it's Thursday. Gosh, tomorrow's Friday and then boom, boom, boom. Bada bing, bing, bing. I don't know where I was going with that. God, I need to stop waking up at 5 o'clock. Oh, 4 o'clock. I woke up at 4 o'clock. Oh, I don't even know what time it is now. Have a wonderful day. Yay. Have a wonderful day.